So you start out, you have your cereal box. It's just a plain cereal box that's empty. And I open the bottom up. Just open the bottom. Okay. But I instead of ripping it open here, because this is where the hinge is, I'm going to leave that because it makes the spine sturdier. So I'm going to go this direction. I am just going to cut up sort of the center. It doesn't even have to be perfect, which is great because it's hard to get a hold of this. But you just cut up the center. harder because I have to try to keep it in frame. That's the hard part. All right, so now you have this gigantic box and this is the spine of the box. And what I did for mine, um, I just cut it, cut them in half to shrink the size down so you can see the size here. So I cut it in half. Now you don't have to do that. You could leave it whole and have a giant book. You can, um, you could trim further in so to make smaller books. It just really depends on what you want. So once you do that, now on this one you can see I just did it very plainly. Um, I cut everything off and just left it like this. But another way that you can do it, especially if you want to reinforce, is all those flaps of your box, you just... Um, take your glue or your score tape. I used score tape on this because it keeps it nice and solid. I mean, that is not moving anywhere. Um, and you just fold your flaps down in and do it that way. Now I did cut off this side because it didn't look very good if I tried to fold it in. It didn't want to fold in. So I cut the edges off. But now I have this little book that I can use, okay? Now once you have your pieces, the, the things that you want to use, your next step is to decide what you're going to do with it. I've decided that I'm going to gesso everything first. So when you gesso it, this is a one layer of gesso. Okay, And you could see it probably needs another layer, uh, depending on how collage you want the background to be. Like for this one, you could leave it just like that and then just do all your other stuff over it. I'm probably going to gesso it again because I'm going to put a napkin on it and I want the napkin to really stand out. So you just take your white gesso and a paintbrush and you just kind of... And like I said, this is going to be the second coat for this one and that's probably going to be good, I think, because it'll still give it that collage -y type background, which I like um, when I do these things. So, and it's fast, easy, you don't even have to worry about it. Now you can gesso the inside as well if you want. I think I'm going to leave it the, the brown color for now, um, especially since I haven't decided which napkin I'm going to do or which style. I haven't decided if it's going to be bright and summery or more of a vintage uh, style. So there's that one. See, quick, easy, that's the second coat. Now it takes a little while to dry. You can use a heat tool on it um, if you want to try to help it dry faster. Uh, I haven't had a problem with using a heat tool. and. It may bubble, so just be careful that your heat tool uh, isn't being held too close to your work, and you should be fine. There we go. So gesso do it. <laughs>